For those of you following along on my Lincoln Penny Hunt and Phil series, you know that I've hunted 251 boxes and have slotted 208 of the 234 cents that the Dansko Lincoln Penny album holds. That being said, right after the 100th episode, we started keeping track of all the Canadian scents that I have found, and that was after 186 boxes were hunted. So, this is 65 boxes worth of finds that are Canadian scents, and I figured it's time to go ahead and see if we can start plugging these spots in both of these books and see how far we can get on the Canadian Hunt and Fill series. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the first episode of the Canadian Hunt and Fill series. Now, I will not have this a complete separate series. I'm going to marry the Dansko Lincoln Penny Hunt and Fill along with it. This is just the initial video to get it set up. This is 65 boxes worth of Canadian scents. And I know we hunted 186 boxes prior to keeping track, plus all of the other boxes I've hunted throughout my channel. For those wondering how many Canadian scents I have found, we have found a lot. In this bin is every single one of the Canadian scents that I have found from 1965 to 2012. That's quite a bit. I would estimate there's probably, probably $100 or more in there in Canadian scents. And then over here is all of the Laureate Portrait or Younghead scents I have found. And these are all the King George the fifth or the sixth, it has both of them in there, and that's all the older ones. So you got everything from, I guess, 1952 and back in these rolls, from 1953 to 1964 in these, and then from 1965 until the last year they minted the Canadian cents, 2012. So quite a bit, a lot of holes in the books. I had the books from 1920 all the way to 2012. That is all of the Canadian small cents. And as you know, they had the large cents also in 1920 and back. But we're not going to be finding those in our penny rolls because they're a lot larger, of course. We've talked long enough. I am ready to get this hunt started. It's not going to be a very long hunt because this is all we got. This is all the Canadian cents we have found if we're going to keep track of them since the 100th episode. So, again, I could definitely go through all of those and plug a lot of spots, but that's not the mission. These are just the ones I have found from all of my hunts. And for those wondering, I do have a near-complete small scent Canadian scent collection of my own. It's only missing two coins, the 1953 shoulder fold and the 1925. So if for some reason we happen to have those in here, I'll be upgrading my personal collection. All right. Let's get right to the hunt. We have to plug some holes. I think what I'll do first is dump out the bag and get them sorted by decade and uh, see what kind of decades we have represented. And then once we have the decades, we'll work our way backwards from 2012 all the way until 1920 and see how many holes we've got uh, filled up. There's 115 spots in this book. So I'm curious to see what the first 65 boxes worth of finds completes. I'll be back once I have these sorted by decade. I was getting ready to dump the bag out and I forgot to tell you guys, I will be looking for the major small scent varieties for the Canadian scents. I have a cheat sheet here. Yes, I used to have a Canadian mat that had about half of these, but I decided to make an updated version of what I'll be looking for. These are the major uh, varieties for the Canadian scents. And of course, it's not all inclusive of the smaller varieties you can also find. But I didn't want to miss any of these because these have a lot more value. Will I update my Canadian penny mat down the road? Maybe. But for now, we're just going to use the cheat sheet. I do not expect to find any of those major dye varieties in this small sample bag of Canadian scents. But you never know. We could get lucky. All right. Let me get this dumped out. Let me get it sorted. I'll be back after I've completed that. There's actually a lot more Canadian scents in that bag than I thought, but this is the decade sort. 2010, 11, and 12 here, 2000 to 2009s, 1990 to 99, 80 to 89, 70 to 79, 60 to 69, 50 to 59, and 40 to 49. We have nothing in the 30s or 20s, but quite the assortment here. A lot of duplicate dates, but a lot of dates in here nonetheless, and we're probably going to do pretty good at filling up the book. Now, what I have to do next is separate them by the years for each decade. So, for example, 
Well, we only have two 2011s here. So I'm going to go through them. Obviously, if there was any varieties listed, I would search for that. And then I'm just going to take the nicest one of the two that I have, if I can flip them the right way. And whatever one looks nicer, and it looks like it's going to be the one on the right, that's the one I'm going to put in the book. Let's just make sure that that's flipped right. Yeah. And uh, if it's the nicest one, I'll put it in the book. And after each decade, I'll go ahead and bring you guys back and show you how many slots we filled. Now, we only have one from 2010 to 2012, so I'll plug that one in, and I'll work on the 2009s as well. Once I finish all of those, I'll bring it back. We'll see how much progress we've made, and then keep moving backwards. Actually, really quick, I'm back because I forgot in the Canadian Scent series, some of them are manufactured out of zinc and some of them are steel. And for 2011, there's a steel and a zinc scent, which has the Royal Canadian Mint Mark. That's what these both have. And I went ahead and took my magnet and we definitely have a steel scent there as well as a zinc. These are both 2011, so I'll be using both of them for the book since they're both made of different metals. We'll be doing that for all of them. I just wanted to give you a heads up to make sure you're checking for them using a magnet. That way you slot them in the right slots. Still continuing on with the hunt and fill, but I wanted to bring up that you will find in some years, Canadian scents do have a lot of different mint marks, either the Royal Canadian mint mark underneath the Queen's portrait, the letter P under the Queen's portrait, or in some cases, no letters at all. And if it has no letters in the book, it will just have a date, like 2005, like a date right there. So we need to make sure that we have them sorted not only by the right composition, but the right mint marks or lack of mint marks, if you will. Let me get back to it. Just wanted to bring you up because maybe some of you didn't know about that. Moving along, I figured out another quick little learning opportunity. Both of these are 2003 Canadian scents, but that was a transition year for the obverse. One was the diadem, I could be saying that wrong, where she has a tiara on her head. And the change in the obverse where she was uncrowned, like right there. And that one has the P mint mark below her. So you definitely want to make sure that when you're moving along, you have the uncrowned queens and the diadem or the diadem queen obverses uh, sorted. Let me get back to it. If I find another teaching opportunity, I'll bring you guys back in yet again. We have done from 1990 all the way to 2012, and this is the amount of holes we have plugged. Now, I haven't started the 80s yet, and we have a couple of ones to put in here, but obviously from 1990 for the diadem obverse, I went ahead and put the best looking duplicate one I had. And then we've got 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, and 99. So all of the 90s are done. Obviously we could use a better 1990, it's pretty rough shape. Moving on to the 2000s, we only have the one 2000 that was minted. So we've got that one and the 101. So we got both of those, but for 2002, we need the P mint mark. And then for 2003, we need the diadem obverse. We also need the uncrowned 2003. For 2004, we just need the P mint mark. 2005, we need the P mint mark. 2006, we need the P mint mark. And this one is the rare one. And I believe that's the one that's magnetic, but I'll have to double check. I do have that one, obviously, in my personal collection. We also need the Royal Canadian mint mark zinc scent. And then, of course, quite a few after that. Not a bad start to the second book. This is the second album. Now we've got to finish up the 1989s and move on to the other book, wherever I've got it. i got to go find it. Let me continue on. I'll bring it back after I do the 80s and the 70s next. Figured I'd bring you guys in for the 1985s. I told you that I was looking for the 1985 pointed five or blunt five. Pretty easy to tell the difference. That's a blunt five. That's a pointed five. Very easy to tell. Unfortunately, all I have here is seven blunt fives. So we we'll have to just choose the best of the blunt fives. I did not get one of the varieties, of course, small sample set, but just wanted to show you guys that. We have finished the 80s. I added the tiara obverse, which is just basically a little tiara instead of the crown. I chose that one because it was the nicest duplicate I had and it had some cool toning. We had the 89, 88, 87, 86. No pointed five, 85, but we had the blunt five. 84, 83, 82, 81, and 80. I will tell you, I did look for the 83 near beads. 
That's the distance between the beads and the rim. We only had three far beads, so definitely don't have the near beads. It's not a variety listed in the book, but it is one you want to look for on the 1983, which we didn't have. The 80s are done. Time to do the 70s, and I'll be back to show you how the progress was for them. We have finished the 70s. I had them all, including a couple of nicer ones in here, but definitely pleased that we had all the 70s. Now it's going to get a little complicated because in the 60s, we have to look for the guitar or harp 62. We have to look for the small beads and large beads and pointed fives and blunt fives for 65. And on top of that, we have to look for any of the hanging scents from 1960 to 64. So a lot of things to look for. It'll take a little bit longer for the 60s. Let's see how we do. Hopefully we have a few varieties, but more importantly, hopefully we have some slots filled. Looks like we have a pretty good amount there. I'll be back after I've got the 60s sorted by year and for varieties. I finished all the 60s, but I figured I'd bring in for the 1965 year since we are looking for both small and large beads, pointed fives and blunt fives. Unfortunately, all of my 1965s were blunt fives, no pointed five varieties, but we are also looking for the large beads versus small beads. And you can see by the alignment of Elizabeth II, if you are dead center between two of the beads, then you have the large beads. And if you're pointing dead center to one of the beads, it's the small beads. I have both of them. You can see, oops, we almost messed that up, didn't we? You can clearly see that these two are pointing dead center to that bead. And if you look at this one, it's a space between them. So the space between them is the large beads. That's the top one. And pointing directly to a bead is the small beads. So I do have both of the varieties as far as the beads are concerned, but not both varieties as far as the blunt five and pointed five. I'll make a note that if you had the large beads and the pointed five, that one's worth a heck of a lot more than these ones. Fortunately for me, the book only has the two spots for large and small beads. So we fill them both those up and I'll be back with a recap on the 60s in just a second. All right, we've got the 60s plugged in and we did pretty good. We did not have a 1960, unfortunately, and that's when the mintages started getting smaller, of course, with only 75 million. So it's a bummer we don't have that one. But as I said, we have both of the bead varieties for 1965. We did not have any of the hanging scents or the guitar or harp scent for 1962. So no other varieties were found. But all the 60s are plugged in the book, except for 1960. We don't have very many left in the 50s and 40s. So let me go ahead and go through those, plug them in, and I'll give you guys a total recap of the total number of fines we had for the Canadian cents out of the 115 that these two books hold. I've got all the 50s and the 40s plugged in, except for the 1948, because it is one of the ones I'm looking for a variety on, and we happen to have one. We've got the A to the small denticles. You can see they get smaller right here. That means the A is pointing at one of the denticles, the small ones. We have the A to the large denticles, a lot more pronounced denticles, and the A is pointing to it. And then, of course, the other variety would be the A kind of off the denticles or in between, and that's the large ones. I only have the A to the large denticles. All my denticles are large. They don't get any smaller, and the A is definitely pointing right to one. So we have A to large denticle. The book does not differentiate between the different ones for 1948. So we're just going to plug it in. Had we had the A between the large denticles, it would have been a little bit worth a little bit more, I should say. But we don't have that one. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in. Let me get it plugged in properly, and I'll give you a recap of the total number of fines after 65 boxes of my Penny Hunt and Phil episodes. All right, we have plugged in all the Canadian scents and chose the best ones for every year and mint that we had and composition, I should say. And so far now, after 65 boxes searched, we have 61 of the 115 Canadian scents. I did not expect to get that many, so we're averaging about one plug in every box, just about. Obviously, the older ones are going to be tough. We haven't found very many of the King George V and VI ones, but we found most of the Queen Elizabeth II Laureate portraits, of course, we're missing one, two, three, four, five, six of those. Either way, a pretty good start to this Canadian hunt and fill. And like I said in the beginning, I will continue to update this book or these books along with the Lincoln Penny hunt and fill episodes that I'll be doing going forward. Every time we have Canadian cents found, I'll compare them to the book and see if we have any upgrades. And that'll be an add-on to the Lincoln Penny hunt and fill episodes that we're doing. 
Hopefully you guys found this video fun and a little bit informative. I know it was fun for me to refresh my mind on some of the varieties I can look for. And it's got me thinking, I'm not sure I've gone through all of these for some of the varieties I re-familiarize myself with. So that might be a future hunt down the road. I'll also say that all the duplicate ones I've already put into their respective uh, tubes or in this jar. And of course, we'll keep those adding on as we find them. If you guys did enjoy this Canadian Hunt and Fill episode, I would appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.